Hi, my name is Roger and welcome to the channel. I nearly always mix through a mix bus when I'm mixing. Mix bus, master bus, two bus, two track, same thing, different names. In this video I want to show you how to set it up, why it's a good thing, why it can be a bad thing, what plugins to use and what plugins not to use. A mix bus is the track, the channel on your mixer, what all audio goes through before you can hear it through your speakers, headphones or before you bounce the song. You can use that output as a mix bus and have processing on that if you want to, but I have a better way. And that is to create a bus, sometimes called aux, and route your audio through that and that bus is routed to the output. The benefits of that is that you can adjust the level on the bus before it hits the output. You can put metering on your output after your mix bus processing so you can see that you have the right levels all the time. But foremost, if you use reference tracks, you can route those directly to the output without going through the mix bus because you don't want mix bus processing on your reference tracks. I always start with an enhancer EQ on my mix bus. Normally I go with a Pultec style EQ. For this video I've chosen to do only stock plugins and free plugins so you can copy the settings and work along at home if you want to. So I chose the Tokyo Dawn Labs Slick EQ. I boosted a little bit of high, a little bit of low and a slight dip in the low mid. That is the Pultec trick. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video about Pultecs. I will link that in the description. Before I do anything else, I want to get my levels right. So I've made a scratch mix. This is only levels and panning. There's no EQ, no compression, no reverb, nothing on the mix except faders and panning. I will start with the slick EQ off and then I will turn it on so you can hear what it's doing. The only thing Side note, do you know that you can have my songwriting guide for free if you just sign up with your email on my webpage? The link is below, of course. And also, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Now I like to figure out what has the most energy in this song. What tracks have the most energy? What is this song all about? For me, in this song, it's drums, bass and vocals. In other songs it could be a guitar riff, a piano or other things, but, but for this drums, bass and vocal. So I will start mixing those a little bit with compression, EQ and reverb, just to get them in the ballpark. I won't spend more than 15 minutes on this. Yeah, I cheated. I already did that before I made this video, so I only had to turn on some plugins. Now we can start setting up the rest on our mix bus. So I will start with what I call a corrective EQ. For this I use a linear phase EQ. This is from Logic because I use Logic. Let's listen if we need to do something with this EQ. The only thing I did was that I high passed it at around 30 Hz because below that there's nothing useful and it will only take up energy if there is something there. And then I dipped a tiny little bit at around 600 Hz because I thought there was a build up there. And that is the thing with mix bus. Treat it carefully, treat it like a mastering nearly. So be gentle. Now it's time for some compression. And I'm always careful with compression on my mix bus. I do as little as I can get away with. Once again, I've chosen a plugin from Tokyo Dawn Labs and I will use a low ratio. And then I will exaggerate the compression and play around with the attack and release and see if I can make the compressor breathe with the song. And then I will adjust the threshold until I have one or maybe two dBs of compression, no more. I 
also think that I want some kind of tape simulator on this mix. So I found a free plugin. This is new for me, but it sounds okay. So I've chosen this tape simulator also. It sounds like this. So why should you mix through a mix bus with processing? Well, for me, it makes a faster workflow. If I can work fast, there's less chance of me messing things up because I work too long with the mix. And I can also concentrate more of how the mix feels instead of how it sounds because I've already set up a mix bus that sounds okay for the song. There are traps though. If you do too much on your mix bus, then you have to adjust that on every track in the mix. And you're back on square one. That is not a faster workflow. You can also, for example, if you're mixing an album, save your mix bus setting and use on every track in the album and you have an overall sound of the album that could be more consistent. Use your best plugins on your mix bus and be careful with them. Use the best EQ you have or EQs. Use the best compressor you have and use them in dual mono if you can, not in stereo. Dual mono means that the left side and the right side compresses individually. If I, for example, have a big floor tom on one side, I don't want the other side to compress. Hence, dual mono. There's one plugin you should never use on your mix bus and that is a multiband compressor. Unless you're totally certain of what you're doing and treat that multiband compressor very gently, don't use it on your mix bus. For mastering, it's okay, not for mixing. Imagine you have a mix with 40 tracks going through a mix bus and you set up a multiband compressor on it. And then you solo up the bass because you want to adjust something on it. That multiband compressor will behave totally different from the whole mix and will mess up what you do to that bass in solo. I recommend not using a multiband compressor when mixing. For mastering or on individual tracks, fine. Not on the mix bus. In a few days, I will release another video about mix bus processing. Then I will use my pro plugins and make more advanced tips and tricks. Subscribe and ring that bell if you don't want to miss that. Advanced in Swedish is avancerad. Avancerad. Until next time, Roger that.